sacral sites shrouded in ancient legends and mysteries, places which, based on beliefs, are vested with unearthly powers. What did those who built them believe? How did those people see the world and their place in it? A group of scientists from Nazarbayev University, researchers of Kazakh Geography, Kazakhstan National Geographic Society, travelers and writers have embarked on the expedition to pierce into their mysteries. In this episode, what is Kone Aulia Cave known for? Whose sculpture did it keep for hundreds of years? What does its underground kingdom look like today? The expedition started in Astana. This year, together with Nazarbayev University, our expedition plans to visit six sites. For the most part, central and northern Kazakhstan is a huge white spot in the study of Islamization of Central Asia in general. Once Buddhism was present and distributed across Kazakhstan, I want to see the limits of its distribution and understand the reasons for its spread. One of our objectives is to demonstrate to the public the current condition of these cultural monuments in order to be able to do something with them in the future. Akol Jailma is the most awaited one. The Mazar of Isabek Ishan in Pamladar region became our first research target. We are now in the Mazar Mausoleum of Isabek Ishan. Isabek Ishan initiated various miracles and cured people. Then we went to the Akon Mosque in eastern Kazakhstan region, the famous 100 years old wooden mosque. It's a special case as the sacral heritage of Kazakhstan is preserved not thanks to the efforts of authorities but because of the quality of work of ancient masters and the will to live of the sites themselves. As of now, the scientists also managed to visit the ruins of the Ablaikid Temple. We are now on the premises of perhaps the largest monastery to the west of the Mongol Tibetan world. Ablaikid was a Buddhist monastery and a Jungarian fortification of the 17th century. You can appreciate the scale of the facility only when you come here. It's huge. The facility's design and the combination with rocks, also a part of the monastery, are just amazing. The researchers stayed in Seme a little longer to collect information about our next destination, the Kornea Aulia Cave. In Semipalatinsk, we got acquainted with local historians. For us, it is a rather important meeting. We have been studying the Kone Raulia cave since 1996. We knew that it existed before, but in 1996, a school archaeological and local historical expedition offered us, local historians, to join them. It turned out that there was very little information about it. We found only one article, Kone Aulie, in the sixth issue of the Russian Geographical Society Digest of 1912 by the land surveyor Brukhanov. Brukhanov wrote that 10 to 12 meters left of the entrance under a canopy there was a stone sculpture of a Kalmak. We got interested what that statue was.
Having lost ourselves in the cave, we absolutely by accident found the necessary grotto and the statue. It was incredible. 165 centimeters long, it was laying there in the cave's grotto. It was covered with substantial calcareous deposits up to 5 centimeters thick, which means it stayed there for millennia. When we arrived at the Korne Raulia cave, a terrible wind started to blow and it got really cold. We even had to put on some warm clothes. The platform at the cave's entrance is very interesting. Its bottom is covered with sand, which means that people brought the sand inside the cave, leveled the ground and maybe used it to make sacrifice fires. Maybe they hope to get cured of their illnesses. Kune Raulie is a very interesting site from the point of view of local worship. It has become a part of the state policy of nation building. Thanks to the Rukani Jangiru program, the cave has completely changed. Its walls were blackened with smoke because people went down there with torches. Now they have built wooden scaffolds there to make it more convenient to descend and have cleaned the soot off the walls with sandblasting machines. Down below there is a natural lake. It is considered sacred. Ancient soldiers probably wash their wounds there, and now people go there for healing. The temperature in the cave is stable, minus 7 degrees Celsius, and water is about 3 to 4 degrees. There was no wind inside the cave, so it felt much warmer. In fact, the weather outside got really bad, and it even started snowing in the evening. Thanks to the fact that special ladders and lights have been installed, many more people were able to get access to the cave. It's good for local tourism. There's always debate around sacral places, and there are no simple solutions. There's no other way but to grope our way looking for an optimal approach. These places will undergo development this way or another. The only question is whether it will be conventional or controlled tourism. Choosing between the two, there should certainly be some involvement on behalf of the government. Kazakh as well as Jungarian soldiers hidden the escape during wars and both sides revered this place. It means they were probably throwing something into the lake. 
It could have been a sword or perhaps a helmet. Who knows? It could have been anything, so the place definitely deserves a much deeper investigation.